uh, God bless you all. I want to speak to you about something so important for you today, as maybe you're planning to do rig expression, or maybe just want to be a successful Christian, or maybe you want to be a successful business uh, man or woman, or maybe you want to be a successful husband or wife, or maybe you want to be, be a successful parent. So the key for all this uh, is something which is hidden in the Bible. It's not hidden really, but Satan tried to hide from us so much. But I'm, today I'm going to reveal that by the Spirit of God. So I want your uh, spiritual mind and also physical mind uh, pen and paper to be here and try to uh, look out all the distraction because anytime when revelation is coming, great revelation is coming, great distraction is coming as well. Suddenly the phone ringing, uh, suddenly everybody knocking on the door, but please try to focus uh, to the word of God, be recording as well and the record will be available as well in case you cannot deal uh, or you have to do something urgently. Okay, now uh, Romans 8, 26. In the same way, the Spirit help us in our weakness. The, the question for you today, what do you think, what is our weakness? Uh, please, if you can write in the chat box, write, write uh, an answer, just just one word maybe, what is our weakness? Uh, let me just give you a warning. The Bible says our weakness generally doesn't say your weakness. So when the Bible says our weakness is talking about something general weakness, mm -hmm. not something personal. Personal weakness can be, oh, I'm sick now, so I want I need healing. Oh, I, I'm I'm I has this and this specific problem. So I need that's my weakness. But general weakness, what Paul says here, our weakness means we all struggling with this. So if somebody you know, uh, uh, a man or woman have a specific problem, but our weakness means all of us we struggling with that. So, what could be what Paul tried to address here? What is our weakness? Just give me an idea. Just put in a chat box whatever is coming first to your mind. Uh, just put in a chat box. Uh, Andra is not allowed to put that there because he know she knows already uh, what I'm going to say. Uh, somebody said flesh. Excellent answer. I believe so. Uh, oh, sleeping church. I love that as well. Yes, that's that could be a general uh, weakness. Of course. Um, okay. Anyone else? Anyone else? So Stella said flesh, Karen said sleeping church. Um, I'm just admitting somebody. Uh, flesh, in a joint to flesh. So we have to vote for flesh. Unbelief, unbelief. Excellent. Okay. So, right. By, uh, as we're going for the, for the teaching, you will have a clear understanding what does Paul mean by our weakness is very very important to have an understanding a deeper understanding because these are excellent answer but there is you know first layer but there is a deeper layer and i didn't see this let me be honest i didn't see this until the holy spirit didn't reveal me but the holy spirit revealed me something so when i say from now on our weakness the spirit help us in our weakness from from yesterday because the lord spoke to me yesterday i see more deeply what does what does that mean our weakness and it's very, very important to understand what Paul means by this, because the Holy Spirit, first of all, is here to help on that certain and specific things in our life. So we must know what is the specific things.
because we use this scripture as a general weaknesses, as a, as a personal weaknesses, but what Paul really says, it, it's a, a general, all of us experiencing, and as in a very specific weakness. Right, we're going to see this later. Now, 1 Corinthians 13, 13, and now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. Uh, it's interesting and very important what the Bible says here. Uh, all the uh, gifts of the Spirit, prophetic words, uh, word of knowledge, word of wisdom, uh, healing, uh, miracles, all these, Paul says, uh, it's, it's, it's going to ending at one day because when we've been with Jesus, we have no sicknesses. We doesn't have to anymore prophesy because, because we are in the heaven, we are with Jesus. But one thing is always remain and great, this is love. And that's the greatest way. And Paul says uh, uh, three combination, faith, hope, and love. Now, uh, and the greatest is, of course, the love. Uh, what is faith and hope and love? You easily can identify what is love and what is faith, but we I find out that I was teaching about this another day, and I find out we 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 struggling to identify what is the difference between faith and hope. So many times we're saying hope and faith is the same things. Hope and faith is uh, uh, renaming differently, but functioning in the same way. So we don't really have understanding what is the difference between faith and hope. But there is something different because the Corinthians 13, 13 says these three things remain. It doesn't say these two things. It says three things. So if the Bible make three categories about it, that must be three deep meanings of each category. So we have to understand what is the difference between faith and hope and of course love. But I think I think we have more understanding about the difference between uh, faith and love. But what is the difference between faith and hope is there a different really is that uh, two different things so this is what we're going to investigate but again don't forget your my first question what is the weak weakness i'm going to come back for that now what is faith let's go by this what is faith first of all so we have to see what is faith. I can give you an, an earthly example. Let's say you have a son and you would say to your son, uh, son, uh, tomorrow we're going to Disneyland. So you said we're going to Disneyland and your son will believe to you that tomorrow it that's going to happen. So your son, based on what you said, uh, generating faith. So when you say something to your son, your son going to believe you. That's faith. But at the same time, when he's when he's believing, suddenly you can see his his uh, 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 face. It's like starting to smile. He's starting to jump up and down. Uh, why? Because hope is coming in. And the hope is that tomorrow that we're going to Disneyland, that's a fate or based on your word. But you didn't say that you're going to have so much fun there. But by hope, your son is generating peace, uh, joy, and excitement. That's hope. So hope is uh, the manifestation of his joy and his body language, which is jumping um, and jumping up and down. And this is how he expressing uh, with his body, with his face, his hope. You didn't tell him that you're going to have so good fun there. You're going to have uh, uh, 
a chocolate there you're going to have this and this there but he's already hoping in it mm. so faith is based what you said hope is based what you said plus what he what he's imagining and what he's waiting for what he's expecting now I will give you more clarity be, the, the difference between hope and faith. Um, let me say this statement. And if you have uh, uh, notes, please do your notes. Faith cannot be without hope. Oh, sorry, sorry. Faith can be without hope. Sorry, I was wrong. Faith can be without hope but hope can't be without faith so faith is existing with a uh, faith can be without hope but hope can't be without faith We're going to prove this as well. So, if if I try to be uh, explaining the in a in a mathematical language, I would say faith minus hope equals fear. Faith minus hope equals fear and depression. I said to you so many statements. Let me just prove this to you with the scripture. Jacob 2, 20, uh, uh, 2, 19. You believe that God is one. Well and good. Even the demons believe that and tremble with fear. Mm -hmm. So you see, when uh, faith is present, but you take out the hope, that means you have no, no more than faith than fear that's why i'm saying faith minus hope equals fear because the demons are believing they have faith but they have no hope that's what that's the reason why they trembling because of the fear mm -hmm. now faith plus hope equal peace and love that's why Paul says this tree is remain. What is this tree? Faith, hope, and love. So this this three these two combination equals love. But if you take out hope from the from from the picture, you don't have anything else, just fear. I just give you the, the scripture. Uh, I believe you're going to meditate on this because uh, these things are going to change your thinking and you're going to change your life. So, uh, I would say again a statement, the connection between faith and love is not as just hope. So the connection between faith and love is hope if you have no hope you lost your connection between faith and love you can have faith but have no connection with love which is god and this is very scary actually but if you see the demons that's exactly what happening with them they have faith they're missing the hope so they have no connection with God. And I just told you, as a Christian, you can have faith without hope. And that is the statement, that is the state when we Christians are living in, in, in fear, in depression, in, 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 uh, in so many negative things. Because we have faith but we have no hope which would connect to us, to God. But we have faith. Uh, <clears throat> now, again, I want you to write this down. Faith 
coming by hearing, hope coming by praying. Faith coming by hearing, but hope cannot come just by hearing. You have to pray for it. Because uh, uh, when you hearing things, is generating faith inside you. But when you are in the presence, that's generating hope inside you. When Moses was in the presence of God, he received the commandments. But because he received the commandments plus the presence, his face was shining. Now the same people downstairs, uh, uh, down the, uh, the Mount Israel, they were listening the commandments, but they didn't receive the presence. So they wow. had the fear and they have the disobedient spirit and they it couldn't, couldn't hold them. Uh, they all died actually in the desert, as you know. Why? Because they were luck of the presence they were lack of the 40 days prayers they just heard the revelations they, they just heard the written uh, law in another word they were just reading the bible so reading the your bible generating inside you faith israel has a, had a great faith in the law israel had a great faith in god as a one god but because they were lacking the presence, they were lacking the prayer, they were not able to stand on a long term. That's why it's very, very dangerous to have faith but have no hope. Because hope is coming from the present. Present is coming by you praying. And I'll be very specific later on. Stay with me. We're going to ending up somewhere very, very specific. When I'm saying we're praying, even I'm going to point out to you which kind of prayer do you need to have that present and have that hope, which is generating you uh, 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 all, all the connection between faith and love. Now, uh, <clears throat> There is a very important statement in Mark 11.22. Uh, Mark 11.22, uh, Jesus talked about, this is a, the example of fig tree. Um, Jesus said to them, have faith in God. Now, if you do your research and checking the amplifier version, uh, of the scripture and checking the notes in the amplifier version, you can find something there. Uh, the right trans uh, translation uh, from Aramic is actually when Jesus said, have faith in God, actually Jesus means have God-like faith or godly faith. So Jesus says, have godly faith. Because the disciples were, were surprising, how can a fig tree listening of somebody's speech and then just drying out suddenly? And then Jesus gave them the key, have faith in God. But the right transla translation says in Aramic, have God-like faith. Mm. Have godly faith you see when jesus speak about godly faith godlike faith he's speaking about the combination of faith and hope because faith and hope combined uh, is a godly faith as i said hope uh, without, uh, if you're taking out the hope, you would have faith, and that faith cannot do you anything more, just make you fear, just make you depressed, just make you fail. There are, there are faith which can make you fail. That's without hope. So godly faith, what Jesus says in Mark eleven twenty two. 22, is godly faith is combined by hope and faith, mm. which sets you up for success in any kind of 
uh, environment. In a business environment, in family environment, in church environment, faith with hope it set you up for success. I will be more specific, trust me. When I say set you up, I will explain you why. Um, that's why I'm saying make your notes because the information uh, I'm giving you, uh, you have to rethink, you have to reread, you have to re re listen. Uh, okay. Now, First John five. Paul says, anything which comes from God is able to overcome the world, and, uh, and the power by which we have overcome the world is our faith. So, John says a statement, the only things which is overcome on the world is our faith. It's not an angel, it's not, uh, not something revelational, I don't know what, it's our faith, your faith. So it's very, very, very crucial to understand you, your faith is the one who can overcome on the world. And your faith, as I explained, has to be attached by hope. And that's the only way you can overcome on the world. Uh, Hebrews uh, 11, uh, 1. Now faith is being sure of what we hope for, being convinced of what we do not see. So faith is being sure what we hope. So faith, according to the scripture, when I said you godly faith, when, when you know, remember the scripture in Mark, when Jesus said godly faith. So Hebrew is explaining what I told you uh, uh, before. Uh, Godly faith means now faith is being sure what we hope. So faith and hope is godly faith. So the faith, the kind of faith, what God is requiring from us is, has to be filled with hope. Hebrews 11 first is just, just backing up what I said to you earlier. Uh, faith and hope is the right combination for godly faith. Uh, now, uh, if you see the hope, then hope is the first connection point between you and God. Because faith without hope is fear. But faith with hope is connected to you where? Is connecti connecting to you to love. Um, right. Now let's go and see some practical example which will help us to understand and go deeper uh, in visual visualization. Genesis 25 32, one of my favorite scriptures. And Isa said, Truly, I am at the point of death. What profit is to, uh, to, uh, to the birthright to me? It's not beneficial, the birthright for me. So when Isa said this statement, there is a huge difference between Isa and Jacob. Today, we would say they are both Christian. They are both church members. They are both worshiping uh, in the first row when uh, the uh, the song goes, uh, "Jehovah is your name," or "Holy, holy." They are first, they are both standing on the first row with uh, hands up, and they are both worshiping. That's Isha, Isha, and Jacob today. But there is a huge difference between Isa and Jacob. And you can find both of them in the church today. Uh, Isha, actually, by this statement, I am at the point of death. Isha is the person who has no hope. Isha, when you say this, what should I do with my birthright? I might just die in tomorrow. tomorrow. He has no long-term plan because he's thinking, 
I can die tomorrow, so let me let me let me do nothing. Mm. Isha, in a modern world, uh, we would we would say he's kind of in depression. And Isha is somebody who has no uh, future plan, who has no vision on his future because he can't see in in a, in far in his future. He's just seeing until tomorrow. And even on that point when he saw tomorrow, he he see the option. I'm I'm just going to die. You cannot live your Christian life with these mind settings. I know tomorrow is not promised, but doesn't mean that tomorrow is not promised. You you should doesn't mean that you stop planning the future in front of you, right? Uh, so from tomorrow is not promised, but you're still going to do your shopping. You you get still going to do your shopping for two weeks, even though you think you might die. So Isha is the person who actually says, you know, Jacob, listen, my brother, uh, I have no faith in my future. For that reason, I don't want to build my future. I don't even care my future. So, you know, my birthright, even God itself doesn't really bother me because I don't have hope in my future because I'm, I'm just depressed. I had enough. Because, you know, when I'm bored, I was full with hair. Uh, my nature is to fight and, you know, uh, chasing the animals. So I'm not that likable like you. Uh, I have disappointment uh, with my look, with my nature. So, and I had enough, by the way. I'm facing danger every day. So I'm not just going to die. What should I do with my birthright? This is one type of Christians in the church who has faith. Does Isha has faith? Does he knew God is existing? Does he knew the, the blessing is real? Yes, he knew. How we know? Because later on, he's crying for it. When, when, when actually happening the blessing, Isha is crying for it. What does that mean? You won't cry for something what you're not believing is important. So later, he realizing that the blessing actually would have been good for him. That means he had faith. He just doesn't have hope in his life. So this is the statement when, and number one type of Christians has faith, but has no hope. Sitting in a church, reading your Bible, Believing, you know and know, and nobody can tell you that Jesus is not existing. Nobody can tell to this type of Christian, uh, nobody can tell and say Jesus is not existing. He would say for sure, no, you're wrong, he's existing. I have faith. So why are why you are so depressed then? Why you are struggling? Because I have faith, but I have, I have no hope. Isa has faith for hundred percent, but hope with zero percent, and that's why he said, "I know that's firstborn. Uh, uh, the birthright blessing is existing. I know about it, but I just don't care." I have no capacity to even think on it. So if you have no hope, you see, you make wrong, wrong decisions. Isha has faith, but has no hope. And what happened? He made bad decisions. So if you are about to decide something, if you are about to, in front of something to make a decision, stop before uh, you have no hope. Without hope, you will make a wrong decision. Because when you have no hope, when you have uh, uh, not holding hope, you will see things different. Isha, without hope, doesn't see the importance of the, uh, of the birthright. But if he would have hope, he would see the importance. Now, Jacob, uh, uh, on, the, on the opposite side, he has hope in the future. So he's thinking in the long term. How do you know if you have really hope in God? 
one of the fact which tells me that you have hope in God, you have long-term plan. Isha had short-term plan. What was the short-term plan? Let me just feel my belly. So when you have no hope, you're creating short-term plans. When you have hope in God, suddenly the future is opening up for you and you're able to think for long-term. Jacob was able to sacrifice his food and make a long-term plan. You see, when you have hope, you can sacrifice things in a short term. You can invest in a short term because you have a bigger plan. So Jacob sacrificed, invested his food because he knew I have long-term plan. Why he was able to do this? Because he had one element, not just faith. Both of them have faith. He had hope as well. God says, Isha, I hated. Isn't that in the scripture? Mm. It's a very strong statement. When I read that, I was a, uh, when I became a Christian and I first time read, I was, wow, well, God is really, really rough sometimes. I was like, God is really wide. How can he say clearly, Isha, Isha, I hate it. Because, as I said, the connection between God and faith is always the hope. If you have no hope, you, you have nothing. The Bible says you cannot uh, uh, you cannot please God without faith, right? And we just explained there is a godly faith, which is in Hebrew, uh, in Hebrew uh, uh, eleven one. Godly faith is uh, combined with faith and hope. That's what I read. And you can have faith, what even the demons has. And that caused fear. That's what Jacob said. So, uh, if you want to please God, you have to have faith with hope. So that's why, because, because Isha was lacking hope, he was hated. And God himself says, Isha, I hate. You can't please God. Now, According to the psychologists nowadays, there are three components associated with hope. So there are three components which are associated with hope. The, and, and it's important to write this down. Why? Because you can identify do you have hope or not. If you have no, no hope, you are in danger. Because you can be Isha. Sitting in the church, having faith, but having no hope, and going downhill. But can be Jacob as well, sitting in a church, having faith, combined by hope, and going uphill. Now, that is three components, uh, if you have hope. The first one, having goal. Having goal means having goal-oriented thoughts. So you have something in your mind, you're setting up a goal, and in your mind, you, you orientate that goal with thoughts. So first is having goal-oriented thoughts. The second one, developing strategies to achieve that goals. <laughs> now the third one, being motivated. To expand effort to achieve that goals. I wish I could just put to you you in this to the chat box. Uh, let me try. I hope this copy paste. Oh, great, 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 great. Okay, it's in the chat box. So let's 
uh, see these goals in the case of Jacob. So having goal-oriented thoughts, Jacob has a goal. What was his goal? Jacob has a goal that I won the birthright. Mm -hmm. So he's in his mind, he was playing with the thoughts and tried to, man to manipulate the circumstances to reach this goal. I, let me tell you, Jacob had many other try, I believe. Jacob had many other try to get the birthright. Uh, that was the, the best plan, which is worked. But I believe Jacob was working on it to get out from each of this. Now, the second uh, uh, point is again applicable for Jacob, developing strategies to achieve goals. So he made a food. When, and he knew when Isha coming back from the field, I just had to like bring the food so he will smell the food. He will be hungry and tired. So Isha uh, had a goal and he was, he was uh, 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 developing the, his strategy. That means he was showing the food and walking around with the food so he could smell. And the third point, uh, being motivated to expand effort to achieve these goals. So Jacob's expand effort, worked on it, uh, uh, went to get the ingredients, the spices, invested his money, uh, uh, invested his time to make that food and and be, be presentable, be desirable. Maybe he put it in a nice place. Maybe he chopped in a nice way. You know how the, the YouTuber do nowadays, the foods you just watching and you see, even if it doesn't taste good, you just say, I just want to eat that because they're making so good for your eyes. So Jacob, you see, by these three points, you can tick all in Jacob's life. That means Jacob had hope. Now, if you see your life, uh, your own life, what is your goal? What is in your mind, which is go around and around? How you develop strategies uh, to achieve that goal? Uh, what is your expand effort to achieve that goals? If your answer is none, 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 you are hopeless. If you have no long-term plan, you have no wow. hope. Mm. According to the uh, modern day psychologist, but according to the scripture as well. So both actually agree in this, even believers or non-believers. Hope means you have long-term plans uh, in God or outside of God in the marketplace. So you see, having faith doesn't take you where you want. Having faith can be, uh, you can be a life of Isa, having faith. You can go to church for 10, 20 years and having a great faith, reading your Bible because hearing coming by, reading, uh, listening the word. Having faith cannot make you success unless you having faith combined with hope. Because faith is a statement what God is capable generally. Hope is a statement how that general uh, 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 skills of God can be applied into your life. Hope is personalized the general scripture into your life. Mm. So you need hope. Without hope, you have no chance to win. Because when the scripture says in 1 John, hope is which is overcome to this word, he says actually the kind of faith which, which is stating by Jesus in Mark 11, uh, God the faith, God kind of faith, or, or, or is stating in Hebrews, uh, hate, uh, faith is uh, the things what we're hoping. So hope and faith, that's the godly statement of faith. You need hope. But nowadays, uh, so many Christians have no hope. I'm going to the church, but I'm going to die. 
I'm going to the church, but every single night I'm just crying and I'm just surviving life. And we are not here to survive. We are here to enjoy. We are here to flourish. But when you are in the place of surviving, that means you have faith, but you don't have hope. Now, Satan doesn't want to steal your faith. Write, write this down. Please write this down. Satan is very happy to have faith. Why? Because if you want to be Satan kind, not God kind, what do you need if you want to be Satan kind? I, I just, I just read to you in, in Jacob. Uh, let me let me go back. Jacob twelve, I believe. Jacob two, I believe. Jacob two nineteen. To be Satan kind, you need faith. Because the the it says demons are beliefs and fear. So Satan doesn't want to take away your, your, your faith. In fact, he wants you to have faith. Because as God wants to make you for his image, oh my God, I, I hardly can sit. My God uh, wants to make you for his image. So Satan as well wants to replicate himself inside you. Now, to, uh, to have Satan image inside you, all you need is faith. So actually, God is so happy to send you in the church because by sending you in church, he would say, oh, please, this preacher, this, this pastor, uh, please preach for them the word of God because by that they, they will have faith in God. And I want them to be like me. Both we would have faith, but we have no hope. I have no hope, so they have no hope as well. So we would both just fear and be depressed and cry. That's the plan of God. And you think when you're going to church and when you're listening to teachings, you teach, you, you think you're pleasing God. But if you not attach hope to it, actually you became of the image of Satan. Because remember, Satan became who he is by listening to the word of God, by experiencing the word of God. Satan can be not exist today without the word of God. Satan built in uh, to himself the word of God, which is faith. Satan has faith. He just doesn't have hope. He has faith in hell. He has faith in heaven. He just doesn't have hope that I'll be in heaven. Satan has faith in healing. Satan has faith in forgiveness he knew is existing. He just doesn't have faith. He just doesn't have hope that I can be forgiven. So when you have faith that in healing that you generally know that God can heal, when you have faith in uh, anything generally, but you have no faith to manifest in your life, that means you're lacking hope. And the good news is, oh my, my Lord, the good news is I'm going to tell you how to get hope. I'm going to tell you today how to get hope. The Lord spoke to me how to get hope. Because that's what you need. Having faith without hope make you the image of Satan. Jacob 2. Having faith plus hope make you the image of God. So you need hope. We, we, we're going to check out where to get this hope. Now, let's go deeper in the scriptures. Uh, if you're tired, grab a coffee or have some water on your face or jump up and down. But please stay with me because I feel the Spirit of God is here on me in this room to reveal His secret. And when the Spirit of God is here, so when you have an anointing teaching, the presence and the faith is combined. 
and that's what you need you need faith and you need presence which is hope and i i i i know you feel hope right now and that's what you need hope with faith now um uh, let's go to let me give you another example israel being in egypt pulling out from egypt being in a desert what happened with them halfway they losing hope how we see that he they saying oh lord you brought us here but now we starving now we thirsty so you you brought us here to kill us is that true let me just stone moses let me just kill this prophet so when you lose hope you became wide when you lose hope you became rough when you lose hope what was pleasing you before that oh that god is took me out from egypt that's great suddenly when you lose hope you can't see anything else you can't see the the greatness of god you can't see prophets anymore you see somebody who's brought you out and left you alone without food and without uh, water and that's when israel lost the hope in the middle of the desert so when you lose hope you lose everything god can be there with you the prophet of god can be there with you the revelation by i mean the law can be there with you the faith can be there with you but when you lose hope actually you cannot uh, uh, travel anymore because you struggle in place and you would say i have no food I have no water. Moses had no food. Moses had no water. But for some reason, he didn't say the same things what Israel said. Because Moses had something which, which shut his mouth. That was hope. Mm -hmm. Israel doesn't have hope. So they started shouting against God. Moses was hungry as well and thirsty as well. So what made him quiet? What made him able to survive the foodless and waterless desert? The hope. Because Moses had hope in a future. Moses had hope, even if I have no food, if I have no water, I know the future in front of me. God is blessing me. God is bringing me somewhere. This is just temporary. When you have hope, you, you're starting to use the word temporary. When you have hope, the, the word of temporary became your friend. When you have hope, the word of temporary as a tattoo is goes to your, your, your forehead because you says, yes, I might hungry. Yes, I might thirsty. But let me tell you, my enemy, this is temporary. That's what the prophet said. I'm sitting in the darkness, but this is temporary because I'm going to stand up again. That's hope. That's hope with faith. Because I'm sitting in the darkness, but this is temporary. I, if you have notes, just put in a capital letter, temporary. Because that's hope combined by faith. You might feel, you might experience bad circumstances, but you know this is temporary. Now Israel in the desert didn't understand this is temporary. They thought this is how it is. We're going to die and end here. Isha said, I'm going to die. My life, my, my, my circumstances are stable. Uh, they are stable, won't change. So I don't need birthright. I don't need God anymore. I believe God, but I don't need God because I'm just stable as it is. But Moses said temporary. So anytime you pray, Say to the Lord, Lord, let me, let me declare what I'm saying doesn't please me. But let me tell this is temporary. Because that's the, 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 the uh, speech of hope in your life. Now, I'm, I'm going deeper. I'm going deeper. Um, when Moses went to the mountain for 40 days, what happened? Israel started to become restless. Why? 
because hope is something what you cannot see. If you seeing, you're not anymore hoping. That there is a scripture we're going there, right? Uh, Paul says in Roman that hope is uh, the things what you can cannot see. If you would see, you know, you wouldn't call anymore hope. You don't need to hope what you already see. You're hoping what you cannot see. Now, uh, Israel didn't see Moses for 40 days. So how we know, again, I try to prove you something. I try to prove you Israel had no hope at all. Israel had faith, but no hope at all. How do I prove that to you? In a minute, that they need to hope something which is not seen, they struggled. When they need to hope the food which, is, which they didn't see, they struggled. When they need to hope the water, what they didn't see, they struggled. They always believe what they, in a short term, they could see. So 40 days was enough for them, long enough for them to say this. If you see the scripture exactly says this Moses, we don't know what happened with, with, with uh, him. Please, Aaron, I beg you, make us gods. Make us gods. Not even one. Why? Because Israel had no hope in the unseen. Mm. And for them, even though Moses was a physical man, they could touch Moses. After 40 days, they said, because we don't see Moses anymore, we have no hope in him. Can you believe, even in a physical person, they lost hope? They knew he's existing. They touched him. Same with Jesus, brothers and sisters, same with Jesus. The apostle says we were touching the word of God. We were walking with the word of God. But so many of you have no hope in it. Why? Because when you cannot see something in a, for a certain time and you have no hope, just faith, you're going to do your own gods. You won't be able to stand by with God. So they didn't see Moses for 40 days and they said to Aaron, Aaron, you have to do something immediately because we realize that we have faith, but we have no hope. How do we know that? Because we cannot uh, bear the weight of not seeing something and not having something in our hand. So make us a God that, and you know what they say, make us a God whose who's, uh, who's, uh, will go before us. Make us a God who we actually can see and touch. Because then you don't need hope. So Israel realized that all they need is something what they can see and touch. That's why they made idols. That's why idols are so powerful. Because if you have idols, even though they are powerless, at least you don't need to hope in them. Because you can touch them. Because hope is the things what you cannot see. But idols, the things are which, what you can see. So for that reason, you don't need hope to have your idols. You can have your idols and you can be happy in a short term. But later on realizing you would be better if you wouldn't see. And that's why Jesus said you would be more happy if you believe but not see. But, but we, are one, we want to see things and believing that way that these are idols. So Israel made idols that can walk in front of them, touch them. And that made Israel satisfied for a short term. Uh, right. Now, let me ask you again the question. Roman 8, 26. In the same way, in the same way, in the same way, in the same way, the spirit is held to our weakness. What is our weakness? 
let me ask you this question again. What is our weakness? Because the spirit is here to help for our weakness. Now, I don't want you to write in the chat box in this time, but I assume if it's not now, after five minutes, you're going to be able to give a very accurate and sharp answer, what you never were able to do before. What is our weakness? We didn't, you see, we were reading this scripture for years and years. Tons, tons of teachers and preachers was teaching, but today the Holy Spirit reveals something to us which is which was hidden. Now, what is our weakness? Our weakness generally. Our weakness generally. What is it? Let me share my screen and show you uh, what the Lord showed me. Because when you see the scriptures, you have to think in content. So now, let me go here. Can you see my screen? Okay. Now, if you see the scripture, what Paul says, we're talking about Romans 8, 26, right? Mm -hmm. 26 says we have a weakness. Now, what is this weakness? 24 and 25 explain. I, I made it read. By hope. Number one. Secondly, but hope. Third, not hope. Fourth, who is hoping? Fifth, have hope. So, when Paul says, in the same way, when Paul says weakness, he's uh, referring to something which is five times mentioned in two scriptures. I don't know how can how the enemy blinded us so much that we didn't see the weakness, the 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 deep meanings of weakness. What Paul talking about is the lack of hope, the hopelessness. This is our weakness, because within two short scripture you see hope, 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 hoping, hope. Stay with me. Hope, 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 hoping, hope. Five times mentioned hope, 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 hoping, hope. So how can you not see on verse 26 that the Spirit is came to help for our weakness? How can we not see the weakness is actually, which is written five times in the previous scriptures, hope, 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 hoping, hope. This is our weakness. The, our weakness is not faith, 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 faith. Our weakness is hope, 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 hoping, hope. Let me stop this sharing. Share the sc uh, screen. I want to see your face. Exactly, Ines has got it. Right. So that's this is our weakness. Your weakness is not anymore faith. Your weakness is not anymore faith because the enemy would love to, you to have faith. Actually, you'd be Satan kind if you would have faith. Your weakness is, according to the Roman uh, uh, scripture by Paul, hope, 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 hope. Five times hope. So your weakness is the lack of hope. Your weakness is the lack of hope. Christians are hopeless. I'm going deeper in the scripture. Be ready because I'm going to prove this. And, you know, like, like the veil is coming off from our eyes. This is how the God is revealing this to us. Now, the weakness is hopelessness. The weakness is lack of hope. That's why we're depressed. That's the only reason you're sleeping in your bed, uh, you, you're lying in your bed until four o'clock, you cannot sleep. You're opening your eyes. The first thing you're opening your eyes, you would say, oh, I wish I could close my eyes for other five hours because you have nothing to do. You have no plan. 
you have nothing nothing joy in the day your days are not joyable your day your day not contain joy your day not contain excitement your day doesn't contain anything your future doesn't contain anything when you see your future you see darkness because you have no hope because our weakness is the gentile christians weakness is the Isha type of Christian weakness is, the Israel type of weakness is hopelessness, hopelessness, hopelessness. We cannot deal with things with what we cannot see. We need evidence to touch. Now, uh, where do we get this hope? How can we get hope? How can we get hope? I said, uh, faith come by hearing. How can you go to church, listening a teaching, getting faith, but that faith doesn't change your face expression? How can you listen that Jesus is a healer how can you listen that Abraham was blessed and was prosper uh, with everything? How can you listen uh, and have faith in, uh, uh, let's say, Joshua was overcome all of his enemy? How can you have faith and and listen and say the apostles, uh, uh, you know, uh, had miracles and so many things in life? Apostle John was in heaven, saw Jesus, blah, blah, blah. How can we all listen in this, having faith and have no joy in our life? The reason, because our faith doesn't contain hope. So in another way, if you, if you have two bottles, you have one bottle full with faith and another bottle empty without hope. And the two combination would cause you joy and active faith but because you have just faith by listening the word of god you have nothing in your hand what is the key how can you get hope because we learn in these days how can we get faith we learned we, you put on your audio bible even the scientists today cannot deny jesus existed they have more evidence of uh, of uh, uh, that Jesus was existing than Napoleon was existing. Napoleon has less evidence to prove that he was existing, but yet everybody says Napoleon was existing. But we have more evidence that Jesus was existing. So faith is not any more a question. We know Jesus was existing. You know, even if I could, I, I couldn't beat you out the truth that uh, Jesus is the Son of God because you believe in that so strongly. I cannot, right? Do you believe that Jesus is the Son of God? I assume yes. There is no doubt inside you. So what is lacking inside you, which doesn't make you that 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 fiery uh, apostle and prophet who's who is producing miracles, who has a financial breakthrough, who has been a physical breakthrough, the lack of hope. So where we can get hope? I said faith coming by hearing, hope coming by praying. Now. We have to go back to the scripture. We can't just guess around. It's too dangerous to guess around. We have too short time to guess around. So what the scripture said. I said hope, 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 hope five times. Now the solution according to Paul. Verse 26, 826 Rome. And the same way the Spirit is help to our weakness. For we are not able to make a prayer to God in the right way. But the Spirit puts our desire into words you know what is the 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 source of hope the source of hope when the spirit is praying out to your through your mouth is actually speaking in tongues hope coming from speaking in tongues when you speaking in tongues you actually opening the top of hope so when you have empty bottle of 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 hope when you're speaking in tongues you're opening the top 
and uh, hope is starting to raise, 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 raise. And now this hope combined with the faith, what you were reading in the scripture, you this two is meeting actually the present and the word of God is meeting and that's produced godly faith, what which is which is stated in Mark, as I said. When Jesus said to the fig tree, instated in, in Hebrews when explaining faith by hope. So get hope by speaking tongues. Why am, when, why am I saying this? I don't want you to just be happy for the fact that I said. I want you to understand Roman 8, 26. So 24 and 25 explaining we need hope five times. Now... 26 says we have a weakness, which is what is our weakness? Our weakness, then we have lack of hope. We are hopeless. So the weakness is this, but the Spirit of God is here to heal us, here to help us. How the Spirit of God helping us? By saying uh, words through your mouth, in another word, praying spirit, in another way, speak in tongues. So the secret is to be hopeful Christian. Speak in tongues as much as you can. This is how simple it is. Speak in tongues. Read the word of God, get faith, but speak in tongues. And this is why Satan cannot be uh, redeemed. Because Satan cannot speak in tongues. Why? Because the Holy Spirit is the one who gives you the words. And Satan has nothing to do with the Holy Spirit. That's why he cannot have salvation. Mm. To have hope, you, all you have to do to have some medication for your weakness, and your weakness is hopelessness. And the medication of God is the Holy Spirit. But the Holy Spirit itself doesn't help you unless you pray in the Holy Spirit. Unless you're speaking in tongues. That's when you opening the top. Sounds silly, but the Bible says... God, the people doesn't realize God by his uh, uh, wisdom. So now he's coming with his silliness. So by his silliness, he will keep his people. He will fill with, with his people, the Gentiles, with hope. And hope combined by faith is make you success. Now, let's, let's see something else. And this scripture, when I read this, uh, Roman 15, 12, Roman 15, 12 and 13, this will convince you. And again, Isaiah says, the root of Jesse will come and the one who rises to rule over the Gentiles in him. Will the Gentiles hope? Can you see? Let me let me put you in the chat box. In him, the Gentiles will hope. Doesn't say in him the Gentiles will believe. It says in him the Gentiles will hope. Why? 